Good evening, everyone. This is the April 20th meeting, public meeting of the Transportation and Public Safety Committee. Let me welcome everybody to the meeting. We'll be discussing the protocols and, and some issues in a minute, but I want to take one second beforehand to, to note the uh, un, un, uh, unfortunate and, and tragic death of Catherine Harris, who was a, a member of the community who was killed in a, a traffic crash on uh, Atlantic Avenue uh, last week, and uh, we will discuss that hopefully later. Uh, but again, I would just want to take a, a, a second of silence uh, for her, her, for her and her family. Welcome everyone. Uh, we will go through the roll call in a minute. Our practice, as everybody knows, is that we hold a a question and answer session for the agenda items that we have present presentations on during the presentations. That's been the practice of this committee and it will continue tonight. Uh, we probably will have a fairly long discussion of the Ashland bike lane enhancements. So uh, we will follow the practice of, of, of allowing committee members to go first on their questions, followed by any board members who are here. Uh, and then we will open it up to the general public. I will ask, however, when we open up to the general public that that the people who either live or work along or represent businesses along Ashland uh, note that in their record so we can call on them first. I will remind everybody, including the board members, that to keep your comments and questions to the point and uh, uh, that uh, while we don't have a formal limit uh, for a board for committee members, I will. I I, res I reserve the right to remind people to uh, uh, to get to the point. In 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 any in any case, uh, welcome everyone. That's our general practices. Uh, and the other point I will make that the meeting chat is not a form is not recorded and is not a formal part of the meeting. I ask that people who who do post in the chat to be respect, respectful of other people. And if it gets out of hand, we will close it, we will close it down. So on, on that note, I will ask uh, John to call the roll. Thank you, Sid. Board mem um, committee members, turn on your mics. Uh, Sidney Meyer, chair. Present. Uh, Esther Blount, vice chair. Here. John Quinn, secretary here. Uh, Ernest Augustus. Uh, here. Sandy Balboza. Present. Uh, Juliet Cullen Chung. John Dew. Hmm. I thought you were, okay. Uh, Cheryl Gelbs. Here. Kate Gilman. Here. Brian Howell. Here. Patrick Kalaki. Here. Nicole Murray. Here. Jonathan Rogers. Here. Mr. Scal has already told us he will not be here. Um, we have a quorum. And board members, uh, committee members now mute yourselves. Uh, the first thing on the agenda is the adoption of, of the agenda. Uh, uh, is there any objection to the agenda as is currently uh, constituted? Hearing none, the agenda is adopted. Uh, are there any comments, response, or changes requested on the previous um, minutes that have been uh, circulated? Hearing none, the uh, previous, uh, do I need a, a motion to adopt the previous minutes? Can I get a motion to adopt the previous minutes, please? Motion to adopt. I get a second? Second. Any objection? Hearing none, the, the minutes are, uh, are adopted. Uh, the minutes from March are adopted. Uh, the next thing, Nicole, is Nicole on? Yes, she is. Good, ev good evening, Nicole. Hi, I'm just waiting for screen sharing. 
and Nicole will go over our district level crash statistics. Okay, just give me one moment. You can see the screen? Yes. Okay. Okay, for new folks, um, so what this is, it's a multi-tab spreadsheet with counts and certain visualizations of crashes with injuries in the uh, CB2 district. Uh, the New York City Police Department records most crashes at uh, this data source open data portal. Um, the tab is motor vehicle collisions, uh, and it is fed into another tool where it can be pulled out and counted. Uh, this data, uh, how reliable is it? Um, it collects uh, information from all police reported motor vehicle collisions in, in New York City. The police report is required to be filed for collisions where someone is injured or killed or where there is at least a thousand dollars worth of damage. But some reports may have incomplete or in ambiguous data or geographical information. So we can only rely on the um, accuracy of the reporting. Um, the sheet is uh, updated before the monthly, uh, these monthly meetings um, and it ends with the month before the meeting. So this will be for uh, March. Um, so this, this report will not include the death that just happened on Atlantic because that happened this month in April, but that will be included in next month's report. Um, so we're looking at this because we can only see everywhere, everything all at once at the movies. This data is to help us get a bird's eye view of the entire district. Um, so we can get, see sort of what's going on and where. Okay. Um, so this is a chart then of, uh, of the year's data of again, community board two. The blue bars are total crashes, um, which with with any injury or fatality. Um, this would be for any type of vehicle, uh, including bicycles or mopeds and cars, trucks. Um, the this month, um, you can see here on March, we're kind of shooting back up. Um, we had a low period in January of only 35 total crashes, um, and we've gone almost, I guess that's double or yeah, about double uh, to 69, um, and the top red line are the total injuries and fatalities in the district. Um, and there's, there were 83 last month. Um, motorists lead the way with the most injuries. Uh, this is the orange line here. Um, you can see they are the most um, injured or killed um, of all groups, um, followed by cyclists uh, and pedestrians. Um, so here's a map of the area where we're seeing the most, we're seeing these crashes. Again, this is only with uh, injuries or fatalities. Um, if I were to put every crash here, this map would be illegible because they happen all the time. But the most injuries happen around the high traffic areas, Atlantic Avenue, very dangerous as we know, and as we have fortunately had a reminder of uh, just this week, um, Flatbush Avenue here, uh, these orange shots represent uh, a crash. The larger it is, the more they happen. And they happen to be concentrated around these intersections, especially Myrtle Flatbush, Decalpa Flatbush, and then just along Atlantic generally in park. Not so many in these more residential areas. We're not near the bridges. We're not near high speeds. Um, so for this year, well, I'm sorry. Whoop. I can't see my data. One second. Okay. So we've had uh, 10 cyclist injuries, eight pedestrian injuries, and 39 mot uh, motorist injuries last month. We're total of 57 people who were injured just the community were two just last month. Uh, across 47 total crashes. And again, this does not count the deaths. This will be included in next month's report, unfortunately. I'll pull this chart up again. Are there any questions? I, had, I just have one point. Um, we have asked, uh, uh, we've been in touch with commission, with uh, Deputy Inspector Renna of the H4. And we've also, uh, I'm, I'm asking Emily, who's here from DOT, that we really would like to get, uh, we we will ask probably Commission uh, Deputy Inspector Renna to talk about Atlantic Avenue next month, and I would ask DOT if if possible for them also to be prepared for next month to have a discussion of uh, traffic calming on Atlantic Avenue. Yes, that would be great. So here I have um, a diagram for Atlantic Avenue that part cut out. Um, and tallied from 2018. And just in you know the five years, you know, 219 people have been injured or killed on along the stretch. And this might not even be everything because again, it relies on accurate police reports and some some things may be put in the wrong intersection or, or and so forth. Um, but 
Atlantic Avenue, as we know, is quite dangerous, and it is going through the um, redesign. Um, which do we have? Do we know if there's any more um, hearings or meetings on that coming up? I, I'm sure there will be some. I'm, you know, there have been contacts made with uh, uh, the local council member, and I'm sure that, and I've seen a number of letters already on these issues. Um, but again, by this one, we've asked uh, Emily from DOT, and we will ask uh, the police department uh, to uh, come talk to us next month on this as well. Uh, Patrick, your hand is up. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I hope this doesn't come across as opportunistic, um, but uh, I think this is like an issue with the BQE project, um, where the 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 high speed highway mentality of drivers. Um, I'm clearly there's a lot of problems with Atlantic Avenue outside of the BQE, um, but you know the the entrance ramp is there. And also just the high speed mentality of a lot of the drivers is it just it just encourages crazy driving. Um, this has been like an eye opening experience for me, this B, the BQE planning process of where people on um, Third Avenue under the viaduct and also in our district uh, under Park Avenue, you know, have talked about like um, at the meetings where they're, they're, the, the topic is beautification of the space under the, under these viaducts and people are saying wait a minute i just want to be able to cross the street without getting run over that's really my goal um so i hope that like i i do believe that the project is an opportunity to sort of try to try to just like calm down people in their driving habits um and uh and and, and on places like atlantic avenue so okay. anyway thank you terrible thing. brian yeah, um, sorry, I figured this is the best place for it, even if we discuss uh, um, Catherine Harris's death at a later point in this meeting. Um, I went and looked at the data in the table that underlies Crash Mapper. So all the crash data goes back until July 1st, 2012. Um, there have been four people killed at uh, Atlantic Avenue and Sorry, Crash Mapper doesn't really show this very well, but uh, I went back and confirmed with like articles. There have been four people killed at Clinton, um, Atlantic and Clinton uh, in just over 10 years. Um, if you combine the three intersections of Flatbush, Atlantic and Fourth around Times Plaza, those three intersections together have five fatalities in that time. Clinton Street and Atlantic Avenue has four alone. Um, and I know that both Times Plaza and Clinton Atlantic are on the uh, on you know the edge of our district, um, but that would make um, other than the three intersections around Times Plaza, Atlantic Avenue, Clinton Street would be the deadliest uh, uh, intersection for pedestrians in the entirety of our district. Um, so four people killed at a relatively simple intersection. Um, I, I think that like a Certainly the entirety of Atlantic Avenue needs to be improved, but um, I just, given that like a, a relatively quiet intersection in, a, in you know, a couple blocks from my apartment, seeing as many people killed almost as, you know, the busiest intersections in Brooklyn, uh, it, something is very, very wrong. Right, and, and obviously we would hopefully get, uh, get uh, uh, DOT and the police department to come talk to us and we can discuss it further at that point. Sandy? Yes. Um, so uh, there's going to be a safety walk on Atlantic Avenue uh, Saturday, April 29th. At tw it starts at 12 p.m. and it starts at Herman and it goes to Fourth Avenue, Flatbush, that uh, triangle. Um, I was involved in traffic calming in the four year traffic calming study and we, it didn't go far enough. We've been asking over the years to, you know, for DOT for other projects to stop diverting traffic to Atlantic Avenue, like the Skirmahorn redesign, uh, eliminating uh, the westbound lane diverted traffic 
here, we have the track, the trailers, we have the BQE. So, I mean, in, and in the night when there's no traffic, that's when the speeding happens. Um, the, well, people go through red lights all the time. We've asked for, um, um, you know, uh, traffic calming measures like uh, changing the signal timing so all the lights don't turn green at the same time. That's, that encourages speeding or red light cameras because cars speed through the red lights to make all those green lights so they, they don't have to wait. Um, so Atlantic Avenue is treated like a highway. We've done our best to make it a destination and I, I won't take up any more time, but um, we have a lot of asks and uh, maybe this time we'll, we'll get some, some improvements. Thank you, thank you, Sandy. Hopefully we'll get some specifics from DOT and responses and from the police department at, at, at our next meeting. Again, I'm not announced. I'm announcing that they've been. We've we have we have asked them. You've heard uh, that doesn't mean they'll be here. We'll have to wait and see. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Any other questions on this? Seeing none. The the public comment on the adopted agenda. I announced before how we handle that. So we will go right into the rescheduled of the MTA Borough Hall update on the street impact. Is there anybody here from the MTA? Chair Meyer, that item was uh, was rescheduled. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, so the, the next item on the agenda, other Patrick, other than Patrick Kalaki now being out of focus and being sort of weird, but uh, is the presentation and Q and A Q and A on on the Ashland bike lane extension. Uh, I recognize whoever is going to be recognized from the DOT. And we'll put to uh, and we'll put the screen sharing on for you. Yeah, so it's going to be Nick Carey. Hi, Emily. Hi, it's going to be Nick Carey who's going to be giving the presentation. Hi, Nick. You can you can you can share your screen if you wish. All right. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, just full screen. Thanks for having us back. Uh, this. Um, we're here to present the follow-up meeting on Ashland and Navy Street. Uh, I'm also joined by my colleague, Sean Macias. Um, so it's been 10 months since we were last here talking to you guys about this project um, back in June of 22. And if you recall, I, I started that presentation by saying that you guys were the first to see it. We hadn't talked to anybody yet. So we were just uh, kicking off outreach and we were going to go talk to all the stakeholders and come back to you with a modified plan. So in so the subsequent months, we talked to uh, Atlantic Terminal, BAM, Brooklyn Center Hospital, the Navy Yard, uh, BIDS, Downtown Brooklyn Partnership, Myrtle Avenue uh, Brooklyn Partnership, NYCHA, Two Trees, and Whole Foods. Um, so the presentation I'm gonna give tonight is, the bulk of it is similar to what was presented back in June of 22. Um, a couple of things are different and I'll point them out as we go through, but it's an updated interim design on the block of Navy Street between Park and Myrtle. That's the one adjacent to the Ingersoll houses. Uh, I also want to talk a little bit about some special loading needs on the southernmost block of Ashland Place between Lafayette and Hanson Place uh, and the proposed design for Hanson Place. I think when we were here last, we just said that you know, we knew we wanted to do something there, but we, uh, we've got a more refined design now. All right, so it's a little bit of background. So. Uh, Again, one, you know, one of the goals we have, one of the ways we're trying to improve cycling in New York City is to build uh, an interconnected network of protected bike lanes. So not just a network of bike lanes, some of which are protected, uh, but the idea is to have a, a network within that that is an interconnected network of protected bike lanes so that you can more or less get a, from A to B uh, mostly on a protected bike lane. And so the reason we're here, because Ashland and Navy uh, connects some very important uh, protected bike lanes in Brooklyn and could be a really great connector for the whole network. On the northern end of the corridor, there's Sand Street protected bike lane taking you to the Manhattan Bridge. Uh, Flushing Avenue has, is a part of the Brooklyn Waterfront Greenway. 
Um, and on the south end of Ashland Place is the Fourth Avenue protected bike lane, which not only goes uh, on to the edge of Bay Ridge, but also connects to Ninth Street and thus to Prospect Park. So really, it's a pretty important link in this in the city's uh, protected bike lane network and the Brooklyn's protected bike lane network. Uh, protected bike lanes are one of the best tools we have for improving safety for all roadway users. Uh, pedestrians actually see the biggest benefit on average after we install a protected bike lane. Uh, we see a 21% drop in, uh, in pedestrians' uh, serious injuries. All right, on to the proposal. So the, the basic idea for the project uh, is to install a two-way protected bike lane along the east curb of Ashland Place and Navy Street from Hanson Place all the way to Flushing Avenue. Um, now, a lot of that corridor north of DeKalb, it's wider, would look kind of like this photo here of Christie Street in Manhattan, where it's a two-way connected bike lane and a two-way street. Uh, but south of DeKalb Avenue, Ashland Place narrows considerably. And so between uh, Hanson Place and DeKalb Avenue, we're proposing to convert Ashland Place to one-way northbound to make space for the protected bike lane. Now, and then as part of that, we also want to convert the last block of Hanson Place uh, between St. Felix and Ashland Place from uh, two-way to one-way westbound uh, to make some other uh, safety uh, enhancements there. All right, so let's get into the, the details. So for most of the part north of DeKalb, Navy Street looks like this, um, and Ashland Place looks like this. It's a two-way street, one lane in each direction, parking on both curbs, and a conventional bike lane, so not physically protected from traffic. Um, so our proposal for most of that corridor looks like this. The existing cross section is on top, the proposal's on the bottom. Uh, the idea is to take the two conventional lanes and repurpose them as a two-way parking protected bike lane along the east curb, uh, and also to install uh, pedestrian islands to help shorten the crossing distance and slow turning vehicles. Um, from the motorist perspective, you know, we'd be maintaining all the vehicle lanes. We'd even be adding some left turn lanes at places. Um, we'd be moving the B62 bus stop that's at Navy and Park Avenue around the corner. Uh, I'll talk more about that in a subsequent slide. Um, we would ban the, the northbound left turn from Ashland onto Myrtle. So that's, uh, if, you know, if you're coming from, down from by Atlantic and going north, that left turn onto Myrtle, we would ban. And we need to ban it uh, for some traffic signal phasing reasons uh, at that intersection, but you'd still be able to turn left on Willoughby and we'd be adding a protected signal phase for that movement that should be able to accommodate the additional volume. Uh, also at Concord Street uh, near Navy Street, we'll be adding in some more parking. There's some no parking anytime regulations there that we'll be removing. And I know that uh, when we did the Navy Street project between Flushing and Sand Street, uh, the parking removal there, you know, was a uh, was a hard pill to swallow at the time. So we're hoping that by adding some of this parking back uh, on Concord and Navy that uh, you know, we'll make up some of that. Um, so the bus stop briefly, I'll just say this photo where you know, you're facing north. This is under the BQE on Park Avenue. The B62 bus turns around the corner from Park onto uh, Navy Street and stops right there. And um, that's where the protected bike lane will be. So the easiest way for us to mitigate that is to just move the bus stop around the corner. Um, so this block of, of um, Navy Street between Myrtle and Park is a little different. This is the block adjacent to the Ingersoll houses. Uh, pretty unusual for a street in such a dense part of New York to not have sidewalks, but that's kind of the defining characteristic here. Um, so this so here's another place where our proposals changed a little bit since we were here last. Uh, we're still proposing the two-way barrier protected bike lane along the east curb. Um, but we, we want to concentrate, we, we only have room for one uh, painted sidewalk at the moment. And we want to concentrate that all on the east side with, the, with uh, the bike so that we know that the bikes and the pedestrians uh, will have adequate barrier separating them from moving traffic. Um, but we are interested in, um, in the future, installing a painted cross, I'm sorry, uh, a sidewalk along the west curb. And we're continuing to work with NYCHA um, on a plan to remove some of their fencing and come up with an agreement where people can use uh, the sidewalk. It's technically in their property, but we're working on an agreement so that uh, people can use that for part of the trip. Um, all right. So now let's talk about the harder part, south of DeKalb Avenue. And this is where the street narrows a lot. 
Um, the block between DeKalb and Fulton is particularly narrow. It's almost, uh, the, the width drops almost by half when you cross DeKalb. And uh, this block is so narrow that it's only got parking on one side of the street. Um, cyclists still use it, believe it or not. There's shared lane markings. Uh, so cyclists are expected to mix with traffic. And uh, it's, it's well used because this is the route you can take to get down to um, Fourth Avenue and other parts of the neighborhood. So the proposal for this block is to convert it to one way northbound. And I'll talk more about the, uh, you know, the traffic and traffic network implications of that later. But uh, convert this block to one way northbound at a barrier protected two way bike lane along the east side of the street. Um, it will be a combination of, you know, solid uh concrete jersey barriers and other types of delineators you know the thing is we have to leave some openings for fire hydrants and so people can get to their homes um, but we are planning on a uh, solid physical element uh, sorry vertical element separating uh, bikes and cars in this block so the last two blocks first let's talk about them together for a minute between fulton and handsome place the street's a little bit wider than it is between uh, Fulton and Cal, but it's still not as wide as it is to the north. So there's no room for dedicated bike lanes. Uh, cyclists are still mixing with traffic. Um, and there's a lot more loading down here, um, in particular at you know Whole Foods and BAM. Um, there's a lot of passenger loading at Atlantic Terminal. Um, so this is this is the next piece. So first, let's talk about the first block between Hanson and Lafayette. This is more straightforward. Uh, just like the other blocks, we're putting in a two-way parking protected bike lane on the east curb um, with pedestrian islands to shorten the crossing distance. Um, but the proposal for the last block is a little different between Hanson Place and Lafayette Avenue. Um, and, you know, when we were reaching out to all the different stakeholders, uh, you know, we sort of walked them through the whole presentation and the design. Uh, you know, we got a lot of good comments along the way and a lot of little things to tweak. But on this block, we got a lot of concern from stakeholders about a couple of things. One was the fact that there's a lot of loading on the block and a lot of it is done by double parking. And so the existing condition on this block is that cars or trucks will double park in the street and load. And then other cars that are continuing the same direction have to go into the other lane. So go into opposing traffic to get around them, uh, which is certainly not, uh, you know, it's not a safe or a, you know, an efficient way to load uh, or to operate a street. It doesn't make it a very safe place to walk or bike despite all the people that are there. Uh, so the, one of the big concerns was uh, if double parking is the norm here, what happens when we make it one way and take it down to one lane? Um, so, you know, in the, the parking regulations there, it's already a uh, truck loading zone and it's not, it's not followed very well. Um, so our proposal for this block uh, that makes it a little different than the other blocks is that we're proposing to remove all the parking from the west curb here and um, install no standing anytime and uh, install a buffer. And the hope is that those things combined can be uh, can help discourage people from parking there so that when uh, loading a, a car comes that does need to load or a truck in particular, because Whole Foods uh, and the Apple Store can get some very large trucks uh, that, you know, can't it's hard to parallel park with such a big vehicle they really need to be able to just move into the space and move out so the hope is that by um, clearing parking for this whole block that will help uh, fix that um, the other another component to this is bams loading along the east curb and although bams you know main entrance may be on lafayette they do all, most of their loading uh, on ashland place along the east curb um, and their concern was that uh, they occasionally have to load uh, very low, large equipment. Um, and we've experienced this in other bike lanes in the city. And so um, it's not something I would, we would necessarily bring up at every, every time we do this at a community board level meeting. Um, but I wanted to talk about it with everybody a little bit, make sure it's, it's uh, the idea is socialized because um, Ashland Place, I'm sorry, BAM does need to do heavy loading occasionally. Um, and so when occasionally, um, we've done this in other places when there's, very special loading needs, say they're unloading, you know, really large sets, pieces of equipment, um, things that would be difficult to get across the bike lane uh, and difficult for cyclists. We implement this, this uh, temporary plan where the trucks can park in the bike lane 
Um, but BAM has to clear parking for the whole block or, or parking for the section that they need to use that's permitted. And uh, the truck pulls in, parks in the bike lane, uh, and then BAM would install barriers, these little barricades uh, in the floating parking lane so that cyclists can still use the space. And it's not a perfect arrangement. Um, you know, cyclists might be a little uh, put off when they see a vehicle parked in the bike lane and have to go around it and you have to be careful when you do it. Um, but I think that it's, it's necessary given the context um, and given trying to balance all of these uses in the space. And we think that um, it's important that we have a protected bike lane here and that we have this connection, you know, from the Manhattan Bridge all the way to Fourth Avenue and Prospect Park and beyond. Um, but we also know that um, that certain stakeholders have, uh, like BAM in particular, have unusual loading needs uh, and they need to be accommodated. So the reason I go into this in such detail is that I imagine um, in the future when it happens uh, and, and BAM is pulled to the curb and they've got their barriers out there to let cyclists through, that there'll be some angry tweets and you know people will be upset about it and think they're they're doing something unsafe. But uh, we at DOT agree that this is uh, the best way forward and the best way to minimize risk. All right, moving on. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Hanson Place. This is an interesting block. Um, there's the Atlantic Terminal, so there's lots of pedestrian traffic here. There's a very popular city bike station here. Um, vehicles are frequently double parked. Uh, and the way this the, the road works here, as I'm sure many of you know, you can't continue down Hanson Place onto Flatbush. You're forced to turn right onto Ashland Place. So it's this little elbow um, piece of the road network. And because we're converting Ashland Place to one-way northbound, it doesn't make as much sense to have this last block of Hanson Place be two-way because nobody in a car would be coming from Ashland Place. Uh, but we, you know, by we think that converting it to one-way westbound. Um, has the traffic benefits, it makes more sense with the, with the road network, um, but it also gives us some more space to work with. So our uh, general plan for this block is the idea is converted, first of all, convert Hanson Place to one way westbound between St. Felix Street and National Place, that's just that one block. Um, remove some of the uh, metered parking on the, along the north curb, um, but still maintain the authorized vehicle parking on the south side. Um, for cyclists and pedestrians, the big changes would be it's kind of a, we're calling it a slow street. Um, it's similar to a shared street where, you know, it's a one-way street, but we make sure to provide access for cyclists, uh, shared lanes in the direction of traffic, and then a contraflow uh, green uh, bike lane. Um, and then some more painted pedestrian spaces, uh, uh, five mile per hour speed limit, uh, share the road signage. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you a draft design. Let me just say that these designs, when we present them at this stage, um, you know, in front of a community board, uh, it's certainly subject to change. It's not final. So we're kind of reluctant actually to show plan views. But we're uh, because what we're proposing for Hanson Place is kind of hard to visualize. I'll show it to you. Um, so this is the general idea that uh, this last block is one way westbound. There's a little chicane here. So the vehicles coming through are uh, kind of have to move uh, from side to side a little bit. Um, the contraflow bike lane is here. One change I will say that's happened since we made this graphic is that this uh, proposed pedestrian space on the left uh, will actually be smaller. Um, it'll be about the width of the parking lane and it'll look a lot like the street seat um, at the Brick Arts, the Brick Arts street seat on Rockwell Place a few blocks away. Um, and that is done, that was done in response to, uh, you know, to accommodating some occasionally large trucks that will be coming through here to deliver to, uh, to BAM and to Whole Foods. Uh, all right, so let's, I'll talk briefly about the traffic direction changes. Um, we wanna convert Ashland Place from Fulton to DeKalb to one way northbound. Um, I'm sorry, not Fulton to DeKalb, from Hanson Place to DeKalb and, and Hanson Place from, uh, one way westbound from St. Felix to Ashland Place. Uh, the reason we picked northbound is there's a few reasons. One is that the adjacent streets are southbound, so that makes more sense in the network. Uh, it also lines up better across the Calb. The eastern curb lines up with the eastern curb on the other side. Um, and in most of these intersections we'd be adding, or most of the intersections of the corridor, uh, particularly north of the Calb, would be adding uh, protected turn phases uh, for the left turns across opposing traffic in the bike lane. 
Um, <laughs> we've done a, a network-wide traffic analysis and you know looked at all the different alternative routes and where people might go. And we're convinced that it won't have a significant traffic impact. It will be a little more circuitous uh, for you to get from the north to Ashland Place, south of Cal, but we think it's worth it given the other uh, safety and mobility improvements we're proposing. Um, for small trucks trying to access these blocks, there are, you know, they can use the alternative blocks, even on the last block of Ashland Place between Lafayette and Hanson. Uh, if a little box truck needed to get there, they could turn on to St. Felix Street, which is a very narrow street, but they could fit. Um, but for larger trucks, uh, they won't be able to make that turn. It's too tight. So, you know, when we were have communicated uh, with various stakeholders, our suggestion for the route they should take if they're taking a large truck into the neighborhood is to go down Atlantic uh, and turn on to Fort Greene Place and from there on to Hanson Place. Uh, and we did, you know, some truck turning analysis and we're going to do a little bit of uh, daylighting, which is where you, you cleared parking at certain corners to make sure that, um, that the trucks can get through. Um, but we think that will be a better way to uh, to accommodate loading on that, that block. Um, another change is the Navy Yard shuttle, um, which will have to be rerouted in the southbound direction. Currently, they go down Navy Street uh, and turn on to Lafayette and stop there and um, pick up and drop off passengers. Um, and we met with them, and, and when we last talked to them, they hadn't determined yet whether they were going to detour the bus onto Rockwell Place or onto Flatbush or a different route. Um, excuse me, but we did, uh, you know, study the feasibility of the bus going on Rockwell Place and we can make it work despite its how narrow it is. Uh, we'd have to clear a little bit of parking at the northwest corner of DeKalb and Rockwell. Um, but, uh, and the, but the exact routing of that, of the Navy uh, Yard Shuttle is to be determined. Uh, they will, they will determine that, but we will of course work with them before we implement and check in. Um, another aspect to this is just sort of looking at loading zones throughout the corridor. Um, and this is something that we were, I think we were looking at anyways, but it really, uh, a lot of the stakeholders we talked to were concerned about this. So we're trying to expand truck loading zones, um, install metered parking on certain blocks, um, and add regular alternate side parking on Concord and Navy. We talked about that earlier. Um, and I think I already, I already mentioned this, the daylighting of certain, uh, certain corners for, uh, so that trucks can turn. To summarize, we're proposing to convert Ashton Place hash from Hanson Place to DeKalb from two-way to one-way northbound for vehicles. It's still two-way for uh, people biking and walking. Um, we, we want to install a two-way protected bike lane along the east curb uh, from, and from uh, Flushing and Navy down to Hanson Place and Ashland. Um, and doing this would be shortening the crossing distance for pedestrians and installing pedestrian islands. Uh, we convert Hanson Place from St. Felix to Ashland, the one-way westbound uh, for vehicles, still two-way for bikes, and implement slow, sleep, slow street design elements um, to help uh, make it safer for everybody. And the parking impact overall is pretty minimal. It's about two to five parking spots per block. Um, a little different on that last block shown here in the photo, uh, where we're proposing to remove all the parking from the west curb uh, between Lafayette and Hanson. And that is it. Uh, with that, I'll kick it back to uh, to the board. Well, first of all, thank you for the presentation. I have a, I have a couple of questions before we get started. When you talk to you, when you say you spoke to the uh, to NYCHA, did you speak to the Tenants Association at these uh, 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 locations as well? No, in the, in the case of NYCHA, we spoke to um, some administrators in their legal department about trying to open up uh, you know, trying to get sidewalks and see if there's a way we could improve the sidewalk situation for people who live around there. But we haven't spoken to uh, residents. Okay, I, I will ask you to do this for the future as well. You know, one of our concerns is, and it's been a, a, a continuing concern that that the NYCHA residents who are directly in, uh, impacted upon this change uh, need to be contacted as well as NYCHA. I mean, NYCHA has one set of... Uh, responsibilities and the Tenants Association and I'll ask you to do that in the future. Uh, I have if, a- If you could pass me an appropriate contact, um, that would be really helpful. Uh, somebody, uh, email and phone number. Uh, I'm sure Taya has those and, and we'll be happy to give them to you. Okay. okay. Uh, I have a, a, a couple of other, other, could you give us a, a, a number uh, with the adding and the subtracting of parking? 
what the total number of impacts are uh, and both on the public spaces, the uh, metered spaces and the uh, uh, and, and the total number of spaces that are impacted as well. Not then because it's a little difficult with that to to do that as well. Uh, um, I don't have it in front of me at the moment, but I can get that to you uh, soon. Please, I mean it, it's it's an obvious area of concern. And, and the last the last question I have is on Ashland Place. Why aren't you adding a two way protected bike lane on that street? That it would seem to me that you have the space uh, and that that. That it does it does connect to two uh, two two other impacted lanes, and why isn't a two pet two way uh, bike lane also included on that on the on that street? I'm sorry, your your question is why are we doing it on Ashland Navy instead of a, a different? No, street? no, 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 no. Just on uh, uh, what's the street? I'm sorry, I, 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 Hanson. Is that your question? On Hanson. On Hanson, you're creating uh, additional pedestrian area, and uh, and you, there you have a a one way protected bike, well, a one way bike lane. And I'm asking, this is why are you uh, on that street? Not I'm not also creating a two way uh, protected bike lane. Um, part of it is that the adjacent block of Hanson Place is two way, so the cyclist traveling against traffic would be put in an awkward situation. When they get to that intersection, um, it's also that we, you know, we wanted to kind of focus on the pedestrian spaces for this block, and that we'd understand from talking to people that there is interest in looking at uh, the handsome place corridor uh, in its totality. So that's okay, something I'm, I'm going to turn it back to. But let you and I both know that bicyclists go both ways on those streets. That that uh, uh, that especially since there's a pedestrian area. What I'm suggesting is a two-way protected bike lane that will protect both the bicyclists and the pedestrians and traffic from them. So I would ask you to, to go back. And, and it, it is not unusual for uh, DOT to have a two-way protected bike lane on one on one-way street. So let me go turn it over to, I will ask you to look at that again, and I will turn it over to uh, board members. Uh, Nicole, you have your hand up. Yep. Hi, thank you. Um, we received a letter of opposition from BAM. Was this uh, before or after? It sounds like maybe you made some changes to the direct area. Have they seen this latest version or was their letter sent um, before any changes? Uh, the, the letter, I think we've met with them. So they've seen this plan. When um, was that that you met? Um, at least two weeks ago. So I think the letter you're talking about was after they met with us. Okay, so their opposition is to this plan that we're seeing in front of us. We can't comment on other um, entities. So that's a question that you would have to ask them. Okay, thank you. Said you're on mute if you're trying to call on somebody else. Did? Mr. Meyer, you're muted. Go ahead, Ernie. I'm sorry. I apologize. Ernie. Uh, I'm going to ask DLT. Uh, handsome place at uh, South Portland Avenue. Uh, it, it goes um, it goes westbound towards uh, 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 Ashland Place. When you did your study, do you look at the truck traffic, the loading docks for the um, for the um, stop and stop supermarkets, the um, Target department stores and the other stores are in that uh, mall. Uh, their loading docks are all in um, Fort Green Place. That court it that's uh, that, that's that's at the corner of Handsome Place. When the 
18 reelers pull out from the loading docks, uh, they don't necessarily turn left and go towards Atlantic Avenue because they can't make the turn. And they can't go straight down Fort Green Place because that block is a one way going south. So you have uh, 18 rulers pulling up on the loading dock, now making a uh, left onto a handsome place uh, to go down to Ashland and take Ashland so they can go straight to the Manhattan Bridge. Uh, am I correct? Have you looked at that, that operation? Uh, we, we limited our scope into where the traffic impact would be and where the dis displaced trips would be. So uh, vehicles and trucks that are today heading westbound on Hanson Place and turning northbound on Ashton Place, we assume that they would continue uh, continue to do that. They don't do that. They literally don't do that because they can't make that left. They can go up Hanson Place to Fulton Street. They can go up Hanson Place and then make a left or right onto South Portland Avenue. They simply can't do it. They are they are cut off. Uh, I would ex I would uh, recommend that you go look at the operation at that corner before you Wait. do anything to Hanson Place. If it's not included in your in your study, I would recommend that you do it. I'm sorry, uh, I must have misheard you. I thought you said that you were talking about trucks coming up and turning on to um, to Hat, to Hanson Place and going on to a Ashton Place. Is that, you're, you're saying that's not- that is true. Yeah, yeah, that's what they do. Okay, so if they do that, they will be permitted to continue to do it because the street, Hanson will be westbound and, and Ashton you're Place making, will be northbound. But you're making Hanson Place northbound, you said. You're gonna make it one way going northbound. Yeah. You're gonna take away that, uh, that um, the, other, the other lane. Mr. Carey, feel free to reshare screen if you'd like. Yeah, good idea. Uh, okay, Ernie, we're gonna we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on. I don't know if you can if you can okay. see this very clearly, but um, the idea is that um, where's Fort Greene Place here? Right here. You mm -hmm. said you said South Portland, no Fort Greene. Yeah, no, no. You know, it's the um, the loading docks are here on Fort Greene Place. Right. But but it begins a it becomes two ray south of South Portland Avenue. So I seen these trucks, these delivery, these 18 reelers that have to jockey back and forth to get into the loading base. When they pull out, they pull out into uh, um, to Hanson Place to try to back up and back into the loading base. These are big trucks. I don't know how you could miss that. I would suggest that you take a look at their operation and, 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 and see how they turn. But they cannot go deeper. They, they cannot go uh, um, uh, north into Fort Greene Place because that block is a one way. So, so you're saying they go west on Hanson Place this way? Yes, they, they do. And then they turn north on Ashton Place and go down north. Very few can make the turn up north to go to South Portland. Very okay. few of them can because they're too big. So that movement will be preserved because this is the one way orientation that we're proposing for Hanson Place and Ashton Place. The one way or... So the, the, truck that, my... the truck that, that goes west on Hanson Place and then just go, to, just, just go to the site. Maybe I'm not explaining it, but look, I would suggest this, just expand your radius and go to that site and look at the activity coming out of that loading area. It's very difficult. Some of the trucks try to make the make the left to go down to Atlantic Avenue. I don't know how they turn on Atlantic, but they also try to turn on South Port or in uh, Handsome Place. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ernie. We're going to go on to the next person. Esther, could you unmute yourself and see if we can get you to talk? Hello. Oh, good. Go ahead, Esther. I'm sorry. I have Miss Blodgy went back on mute. Oh God! <laughs> I want the member, the committee, to keep in mind that we um, approve a project at one thirty Felix, and a new building will be going up, a mega co-op, and it's going to be twenty three stories. So there will be construction equipment, vehicles, deliveries, and that's going to go on, and that's going to 
narrow, and you know, St. Felix is a very narrow block and it's dangerous. That block collapsed twice in 1917 and 1997. And one committee led um, members to realize that. The other thing is, Taya sent out um, this announcement and she said she got over a thousand form letters, all the same text, no addresses. I think all those letters should be ignored. If people feel passionate and they want a bike lane on Ashland or whatever, they should at least put their name and address. And you don't have to live in community board two to ride through community board two, but you could have stated that in the letter. This could all came from one server. We don't know. So all of those letters should be ignored. After all, when Willoughby had 800 signatures, with the real, and they live in the community, we pretty much brushed them off. So definitely a form letter with no addresses should be brushed off. Thank you. Sandy, you're next. Sandy, you're unmute yourself. Yeah, I was just trying to unmute. Okay. Okay, go ahead. So uh, this sounds similar to the Skirmahorn Street redesign with the protected bike lane and uh, eliminating um, a lane of traffic. So, uh, which which impacts the other streets where the traffic is going and makes them more dangerous. Um, also, I don't understand why these, you know, these bike lanes are done and then the, the bikers, and I used to be a biker for a long, long time, um, and a member of transportation alternatives until, uh, I decided it was, became a lobbying group, but, um, S Sandy, Sandy. I, I know, I know. I'm going to get to yeah, the that, point. Yeah, that's wrong, Sandy. I'm going to get move, move to the on point. to your point on this one. Yes. So, uh, one of the issues with these protected bike lanes and um, you know moving everything around, uh, the bikers don't stop at red lights, and they're coming in two different directions. It's unpredictable. They speed. Um, while they're making turns, uh, I'm just, just from what I've been observing uh, since the um, Skirmahorn redesign was done. And I, I don't feel safe. I feel less safe all the time because of all this. So why, why aren't the bikers stopping at the red lights? Why isn't enforcement or transportation alternatives or our elected officials, why, why aren't these things being addressed? Because you want to make it safer for one group and then make it unsafe for everybody else. Sandy, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to, while bikes are an issue, which we continually have, it, let's talk specifically about the changes they're making as well. Uh, let let let's get get back well. To okay, the, so they're diverting traffic to other streets for one thing, and okay. and also I see what happens uh, with the on Skirmahorn, the uh, Brooklyn Fair. They're parking on the sidewalk um, with their big tractor tra trailers, and there's a school. I don't know if there's a school on this route, but the school buses are right in the two way uh, lane and. Um, all right, that's it for now. Thank you, Sandy. Brian? Thank you. Um, I just want to remind everyone that we started with uh, a review of crash statistics, including a bunch of people who have been killed in our district. Um, as far as I know, none of them by bikes. I don't really want to get sucked into this, but let's keep that in mind because we're talking about safety. Um, this plan is not just um, about uh, making people bike. Uh, safer. It, protected bike lanes make everybody safer. People walking, people driving cars, people passengers in cars, whatever. Um, but I, I, 
I'd rather just um, ask a couple questions of uh, the DOT reps. Um, please, the, do, please do. Thank you. Uh, so the um, for uh, the Brooklyn Academy of Music, um, I, I'm just I'm curious. Uh, what is the what is the agreement uh, here? I mean, I, I providing a like safety tour to to bike around, um, you know, trucks unloading. I, I don't think is um, a, a I don't think is a uh, a uh, unresolvable obstacle here. Um, but I'm, I'm curious how often this is expected to happen, what exactly uh, BAM is uh, promising to do, what to do if BAM does not do that, say, you know, the parking spots are occupied and BAM just parks the truck there. I mean, I would like to get a little bit more details about how this uh, detour is supposed to work. Sure, so it's a permitted thing. They have to, they have to get a permit from DOT to do it every time they do it. Sir um, Kerry, could you actually show that visual again, please? That was very helpful. All right, let me. There. So um, they can't do it anytime and they have to get a permit to do it. Um, and the frequency and the, you know, and the, the extent of it is um, not something that we established as part of the initial agreement. Um, and, you know, we, we established a similar, uh, we worked this out years ago with the Beacon Theater on Amsterdam Avenue. Um, and it's worked relatively well. So uh, when they do this, they have to get a permit to do it, you know, and they have to have the provide the barriers and they have to you know, clear the parking. And uh, it definitely, it, it takes some effort on there. And there's no, there's no question. Um, but I think that most of the time, most of the loading that's happening are things that people can load across the bike lane. People load across protected bike lanes all across the city, but it's when they have especially large equipment um, that's just too much. Or they think, you know, or they're, or they're feeling like it'll be too much, put, put everybody too much at risk. They can get a permit uh, from the city to do this, uh, you know, on a, on a one-time basis. So, okay. so they've, they, they, but they, but they haven't agreed to do this yet. They're, they sent a letter in opposition. Have they, they, have they, they have not agreed that they will only do it during times that they get uh, permits, correct? Um, I mean, we're providing a parking lane, right? So if people want to park, they can park there. Uh, and if you want to park outside that parking lane, in this case, you know, this is a, an offer we have, uh, a suggestion that if they really want to park at the curb, uh, this is an agreement we can work out. Right, but they, but they, but, but to be clear, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, um, uh, they, they haven't agreed to this concept of getting permits each time that they need. Uh, they're moving scenery in and out. Um, I mean, we weren't, it's not a, it's not an agreement. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, an option. Um, you know, when people want to park out, if they want, you know, unusual parking or, you know, when we go out and give, um, authorized parking, like at Brooklyn center hospital, for example, uh, there's authorized parking for, you know, for certain medical personnel for emergency, right. emergency. So we're making sure to maintain that and move it. Um, but it's not, it's not a, uh, it's not a requirement. you know, we're not requiring, Bam or anybody to pull okay, no, no, okay, I, okay, I understand. I'm just trying to see whether they. Uh, I, I, I'm going to tell the two other board members. Uh, Brian, this is Brian. Go ahead, Brian. Can, 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 if you have any other questions, please go feel free. Thank you. I had um, uh, one more point on the. Uh, I believe it's the next uh, slide uh, forward. Uh, maybe the one after. Thank. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Um, recently, uh, uh, you. Uh, undid a change to uh, uh, one block of Bond Street. Uh, it, had, it had originally been um, uh, northbound. It was converted to southbound several years ago and converted back. Um, and when that, when the most recent change was made, the, uh, the, the bike lane um, was preserved and became a contraflow lane. And we asked that, um, that barriers be added to protect the lane, given that's a contraflow lane. And um, I, like, I mean, whatever motion we are, I don't even know we're going with motion. So if, if, if we're not actually doing that, um, I'd just like to ask DOT to uh, strongly consider adding um, like the similar barriers that were used um, on on Bond Street 
uh, here to protect the contra flow direction because I strongly suspect people will simply park uh, to access the building, uh, to access the uh, electric terminal. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank Patrick you. Kalaki. Hi, uh, just wanna know if Nick has any data on the number of times that BAM would need a permit. Um, I know, I know you said that this is just an option and it's not a, like, but, but is there, did, was there any in their discussions, did they say, did they kind of describe the circumstances and how many times they do face that, that would legitimately and benefit from a shutdown? Uh, I don't recall a number, but, you know, I think this is the kind of thing where uh, it's something that, you know, you probably try out and you ease into and figure out when you need it and when you don't. And it's and not necessarily clear uh, from the get go before it's done. But we didn't know we don't I don't have a number. And and where where do you do this elsewhere? Uh, in front of the the Beacon Theater, which is on Broadway, but their loading is on Amsterdam between uh. 74th and 75th. Okay, and you think it's worked out? Yeah, I mean, I think it's not perfect. Like, let's be clear about that. Um, okay, you know, when you see it, when you see uh, trucks parked at the curb and the barriers, like it kind of, it's, you know, it's, um, yeah. As a cyclist, like it's frustrating, right? You're like, well, this shouldn't be this way, you know, right. and, it, and it doesn't feel good. Um, but you know, not everybody has this sort of like broad knowledge that we're talking about here. So that's why okay. I, try to, I try to bring it up so specifically here so that people are more familiar with it. I hear you. Okay, thank you very much. I'm all right. I'm aware that there's a, a board member who we will call on and also that the committee members, there are some people who are asking for a second round. I'm going to call a second round for the uh, board members, but I ask you specifically to keep your question or comment short. All right. If not, I will definitely cut you off. All right. Uh, Ernie. Yeah, I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna talk about uh, BAM specifically. Uh, you know, I heard I didn't get the full meaning. Um, you know, here's the fact that BAM is a 168 year old uh, cultural institution since 1858. It's been an economic engine uh, for this city for quite a while. I know uh, it's been funded by the city council and cultural affairs and so forth. Um, at, you know, the fact is that at present, the block of Aslan alongside uh, BAM contains multiple curb cuts with loading doors, both for BAM and the Fisher, uh, you know, theater. Moreover, about 60 feet south of Lafayette on the east side of the block, uh, DOT, now this is established by DOT. DOT has legally established the uh, loading zone uh, that goes from that point down to the southern end of the Fisher building, uh, clearly establishing uh, territory required for parking trucks for loading. Uh, these signs establish a no parking zone from 7 a.m. to 4 okay. p.m. all Ernie, day. Ernie, Ernie, don't no, go no, over, no, I, Ernie. I, oh, no. All right. I'm not going to go but over here, the specific signs. I'm not, ask okay, your I just want to ask the question. Ernie, I just want to preface my question. Ask your question yes, and please, move let on. Let me just finish my question. You know, uh, again, you know, I understand the opposition to this because of the impact that it has on on BAM as a cultural institution. Uh, and I would like for DLT. I know it's are you in discussion with BAM about this or having uh, looked at it? Uh, and because it, it, we asked the question and you're saying that you cannot answer it. Yes, absolutely. We've been talking with with BAM, and we'll continue to work with them. Um, and I think you know, when this goes in, we'll have to stay on top of it and work with uh, the police department and with you guys and with BAM and uh, make tweaks and make it work. It's going to take it's going to take some effort. Uh, I don't think it's going to necessarily uh, be perfect from the get go, but we're going no, to. Okay, to I'm going to be quiet. But okay, Ernie, Ernie, I'm, Ernie, I'm finished Ernie, it, please. Ernie, yes, I'm, I'm moving on to another person. Esther, go ahead. Hi, I wanted some clarification. You said that um, something about Willoughby, they're going to turn into Willoughby. Can you say that again? Where is it at? Willoughby yes, so, so we're as part of the plan, 
Um, how to make this not long-winded. Feel, feel free to throw that visual back up. <laughs> All right, yeah, let's do it. Um, where are we? So we are proposing here to ban the northbound left turn onto Myrtle Avenue. It's not, not a lot of people make that turn. It's not a heavy turn, but we need to ban it to make the signal timing changes at Navy and Myrtle that we need to make in order to put in a two-way bike lane. I don't want to get too deep into the technical stuff, but we need to ban that turn. Um, it's a it's a low volume turn, and the you know people who will make that turn today, the detour for them is to go on Willoughby instead, um, and that is not also not a heavy turn, but as part of this project, we're looking to. It's Willoughby in what in what in what street? Tell me, I can't. Willoughby and and uh, Ashland. Is Willoughby and Ashland part of the um, open streets? I think it's the, I think, isn't it's the Willoughby on the other side of the park? That's, that's, that's correct. It's Willoughby Avenue. Yeah, it's not, it's yeah, not I the open, it. it's part of the it's project. Not the open, it's street. not the open streets there. Okay, I just want to say one thing real quick. Last night at Landrews, we had a proposal for um, trucks to um, park in the loading zone. And a lot of members on this, uh, some members on this committee opposed it because they said it would go into the bike lanes. I see that happening here also. That's all. Hey, thank you, Patrick. Oh, uh, uh, I, I left my hand up, sorry. Okay, that's okay. Ernie, you can have another minute. Sid, no, thank you. You're welcome. Tom uh, Holsitz, uh, and one of these days I'll learn how to pronounce your name. Uh, Huji, but Sid, I think Brian just raised his hand, so if you want to give him another opportunity to speak. Oh, you can go first, Tom. Okay, sure. Uh, thanks for your time. Um, I think this proposal at a high level is extremely well thought out. It can be a beneficial contribution to the bike network in Brooklyn. Uh, I want to specifically applaud DOT for prioritizing safety when you were forced to consider a trade-off between the status quo offered by a car, car parking and building a fully protected bike lane. Um, so I, I said this is the first time you presented this project to the committee, uh, but I wanna reiterate it now. Um, I don't think it's enough to physically delineate the bike lane from the, the motor vehicle travel lanes. You also need to protect the bike lane at the egress points. Um, what we've seen on Shermerhorn is, uh, I, would, I would say a half measure. You, you, since the last time you spoke, you, DOT introduced these center, center line vertical elements. I think it's a great idea, it's a great start, uh, but the obvious issue is that you use temporary disposable materials and drivers are clearly treating them the way they are designed. Um, I think Ashland would be a perfect opportunity to demonstrate the power of a permanent bollard made out of either steel or, or concrete or whatever else you could use that would stop a vehicle from driving over it, um, especially because it's, it's a two-way bike lane and there are segments that have one-way vehicle traffic. It would be very dangerous uh, if, a, if a cyclist had to veer out of the bike lane and head towards oncoming traffic because a truck driver decided to, to drive into the bike lane or any other kind of driver. Um, we, we, we've seen in this neighborhood in particular, enforcement's an issue. We don't wanna rely on enforcement. We'd rather the bike lane design to just self-enforce. Um, I think if you're gonna pursue the special loading event design, uh, you need to define specific design elements that cyclists can expect to see. Um, similar to how there's the temporary bikeway design guidelines that uh, you've you've defined through the the bike stipulations that you put in your street work street work permits, um, and I think there need to be serious and immediate consequences uh, for BAM if they violate the agreement, either by not filing for permits when they when they choose to use the bike lane for loading, or if they don't put out those you know defined design elements when they do have the the proper permit. Um, and I think if the point of Ashland, of this Ashland Place project is to create a truly cohesive network connection to 4th Avenue and southward, um, I think you need to install additional elements on that curb between Hanson and Flatbush. Um, the bike lane should be delineated with like paint on the sidewalk itself. I think you need to like add physical structures onto the sidewalk so like a, a food vendor can't drive their car and just block where the bike cyclist are, are going to be crossing that that uh, curb, um, and 
I guess that's that's the totality of my comments. But I, I guess I would just ask, how is DOT going to evaluate the success of this project? Um, and what are the kinds of observations you would make once the project is implemented that would cause you to make tweaks or other adjustments to the design once it's implemented? So it's a combination, I think, of observations and complaints. Uh, you know, I think there's a there's a bunch of things happening here. I mean, there's the one way conversion and the displaced traffic and what that looks like. Uh, we're making I haven't got into it, but we're making pretty significant uh, signal phasing changes at Flushing Park and Myrtle and DeKalb uh, and Willoughby as well. Um, so we want to see how those are going and maybe you know adjust those as they go. Um, and then you know we just regularly bike and walk and drive the corridor and see where the problems are, see where people are you know, blocking the bike lane or see where there's double parking that needs to be addressed at the loading zone um, or when signal timing needs to be tweaked or, or parking regulations. Um, so it's, a, it's definitely a combination of what we see in the field and what we observe and what comes in. And complaints do come in. We get a lot of 311 complaints about just about everything. So um, in particular, I think the Southern block that we've been talking about um, between Lafayette and Hanson Place, that's one we're gonna be monitoring closely. Um, and spending time out and maybe hanging cameras, things like that. Um, there's different ways to do it. Okay, thank you. Uh, John Quint. Thank you, Sid. Uh, do you have now with that, and talking about the Ashland block between Lafayette and Hanson Place, what kind of uh, traffic counts or do you have for them in terms of what the southbound numbers are and now what the northbound numbers are now? I don't have the volumes in, right in front of me, but um, it was low. I think it was something like one or 200 um, southbound. The thing is, you know, because like north of DeKalb, there's a lot more volume on, on Ashland and Navy because it connects to a lot of things. Um, but particularly south of Fulton, you start to see the volume really drop off. Um, and so when we looked at, you know, a combination of depending on where people are coming from, before they used to be turned where they're currently turning on to Ashland Place, say from DeKalb. Some people are coming south from Navy Street. Some people are turning in. What would their alternative route be? Uh, you know, and some of them would know the new route and some people would miss it and have to take the next one. And sort of looking at all the possibilities, uh, all the, and then we looked at the, the potential impacts at all those intersections and they were all really minor, you know, and we, you, and usually in a case like this, you'd have to do more um, alterations to signal timing and various other things to make it all work. But in this case, it, it seemed like he was gonna be fine as is, um, but we, you know, we will, as, as said, we will monitor it and make changes as necessary. Ernie, go on mute, Ernie. You're talking over everybody. Thank you. Um, now, beside, in that block between the, the, the Ashland block, the BAM block, there's also, who else? loads and unloads there. Whole Foods is one of the also, right? Yes. And and beside, I mean, BAM has several buildings, as Ernie pointed out, along the block. Are there any other um, businesses that load, that do loading and unloading on that block, to your knowledge? Um, I know the, the Apple Store does, for example. Um, I think that's the other main one. Um, uh, really quickly, I'm a residential property on the building. Uh, we have frequent move-ins and move -ins. Okay, now the uh, all of the Whole Foods trucks are now going to have to come down Hanson and come up Ashland and go up, um, Ashland. go up Ashland to get to the to get to the to get to the Whole Foods loading dock. Yes, and that's what all the BAM trucks will have to do, also. Correct, and. Um, and will they be, and, and they're gonna to have to, uh, I'm just thinking that they're gonna have now, obviously BAM and, and Whole Foods loaders and unloaders simply come down Ashland and they can come off Lafayette or any of the other streets that they're coming. Now they're all gonna to have to use small ones, St. Felix and large ones, um, Fort Greene to get to Hanson, to get to Ashland, to turn up. Correct. And, and, we, and we've you, analyzed those turns and made sure that, you know, we talked to them about the, the size of trucks they have. You know, they do a lot of uh, off-peak deliveries overnight. And, you know, we looked at 
all the corners within the route they would take and have made some adjustments and made sure that, you know, sometimes we have to pull a stop bar back on a cross street or, or uh, daylight a few parking spots, but they should be able to make it. All right. And uh, as long as people aren't parking in those anyway. Correct. And that has, when, in your discussion, turning out of the discussions with BAM, what you presented tonight with them having to, if they go into the bike lane, provide, get permits and provide all of these uh, cones, or whatever it is to uh, divert uh, bike traffic. Did you specifically discuss that with them? And did they give you their reaction one way or another? Yes, we, we definitely discussed it with them. Um, they, you know, they aren't used to having to do that today. So it was an additional, it's additional cost, it's additional resources. Um, and, you know, and we know, we know that's, that's a, a tough, a tough thing, but we're trying to strike a balance out here between, you know, making sure that we can provide safe loading for these institutions and also have a safe street where people can walk and bike. Uh, and, you know, so the double parking in the street to load isn't the norm um, and isn't the, the status quo that we're going for. Um, so, but, you know, we're committed to continuing to work with them. Uh, we certainly, you know, it wasn't like, a, there was no, you know, angry ultimatum, like we're, they're a stakeholder and we're not going anywhere and we're gonna keep working with them until we find a way to make it work. Thank Ernie, you. Ernie, go ahead for a minute. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I was told I could go after Thomas. Go ahead, Brian. Thank I thought you. I called you. Uh, I thought I called you once again. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I want to echo uh, Thomas's comment uh, to do it to you about this being a, a thoughtful proposal that tries to take into account the needs of many different users on the street at various times. Um, and I uh, also want to point out that this is the the final piece um, in Brooklyn. Uh, you know, connecting protected lanes that run as far as the border of Bay Ridge and Sunset Park all the way to the city. Um, and then across the bridge, uh, when we finally get the, uh, the northbound section on, on center, whenever, whenever that happens, um, connect the lanes on center and Lafayette that, you know, run all the way um, uh, to, to I'm trying to think of how far that goes. Um, Brian, I'm going to ask you the same thing. Please finish up. Sure. Um, there are a lot of people who are already using this. This is the the last piece in the missing link in Brooklyn that connects, you know, several high uh, use uh, uh, protected bike lanes. Um, this 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 is a key gap that needs to be filled in. And um, thank you very much to DOT for doing this. Okay. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Ernie, for one more minute. Yeah, I just want to say that, you know, I recognize BAM as being an industrial zone. It employs people, uh, it employs the teamsters, the truck drivers, uh, and again, uh, it's an economic engine uh, for this city. Uh, and But these loading zone has been legalized for years by DLT. i just trying to figure out, can you take something that was Uh, 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 Mr. Augustus, uh, Julie, you're muted. Juliet, go ahead. Okay, thanks, Sid. Um, I agree that there are components of the proposal that are very nice and thoughtful, like the uh, expanded pedestrian plaza on um, Hanson Place and um, the idea in general to create a, a safer um, uh, dedicated bike lane. I do think there are also components that are problematic. Um, one of them is uh, moving the bus stop at Park, and uh, at, at, uh, I don't know if it's called Ashland or Navy at that at that spot. Um, I I think right now there's two lanes of traffic. The left lane is a left turn only, and that's very um, uh, a, a well utilized lane. And then the right lane is a straight lane. So I, I think that bus is going to block traffic um, if you keep it if if you put it in the proposed location. Um, I would suggest maybe looking at an alternate alternate location. Um, likewise, making the left turn onto Willoughby in order to access eastbound Myrtle, I think is going to take a very quiet neighborhoody like street and and turn it into a, 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 a 
very trafficked street and it's not frequent that uh, that left turn is made. Um, so, and, and then lastly, the conversion of Ashland to uh, one way northbound. I heard um, the presenter say that it had very little impacts on traffic, but I, also, I drive that on the northbound, um, but I do see a lot of traffic during rush hour going the other way. So I would ask that DOT send us some information on the um, studies, the engineering studies that were done to show that it would have little impact. Yeah, thank, thank you, you Juliet. Patrick, well, for another minute. And then we're going to open it up to uh, uh, questions from the community. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering if, um, well, well, first of all, on Whole Foods, uh, I think the comment in the notes that answered my question, but th that they are not affected because they're on the west side uh, of, of the building. And But I just wanted to ask Nick to confirm that um, in terms of their loading docks. And then I'd be curious to have him uh, re reply to uh, Juliet as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to open it up to public comments. I remind the public comments that it's for two minutes and two minutes only. The, uh, if if you are a business on uh, uh, on the area being impacted, please make sure that it's in it so I know that you're a business commenting as well. And I'm going to start with Vishnu Reddy. Hi everyone, I'm a resident of Community District 2 and I ride bikes in the area almost every day. I wanted to comment to express my wholehearted support for this bike lane. Um, this fills a clear gap in Brooklyn's bike network and provides connections to between heavily used bike corridors with Skimmerhorn and the 4th Ave bike lanes on one end and the Manhattan Bridge and the Flushing Avenue protected bike lane by the Navy Yard on the other end. Uh, there is a clear demand for this protected infrastructure. Uh, despite the high stress and dangerous situation on Ashland and Navy right now, there is a lot of bike traffic and we're keeping people in harm's way by failing to take action here. I um, also wanted to uh, address a concern that a board member said about cyclists not following red lights. It's already legal in a few jurisdictions for cyclists to treat red lights as stop signs. And we know from those cases that, that this doesn't create any negative- Vishnu, I'm gonna stop you, that's off topic. Vishnu, it's off topic. I'm gonna to move on to the next person. Thank you, Andrew. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Andrew Matsuoka. Um, I'm a volunteer with the TA Bridges for People campaign. Um, I'm helping with some of the letters that you've been receiving. Um, so like, the, we'll make sure, I, I think, Earlier, it was referenced that the 700 letters didn't have addresses. We'll make sure that they have addresses. We were out on, we were out uh, meeting our neighbors, collecting signatures, getting folks online. These are all real sort of um, folks, and we'll make sure that that information gets. We did actually collect the addresses. We'll make sure that that gets sent along. Um, I live right in the middle of this project. Like I can see it out the window. I bike it all the time. I um, like I see all the cars speeding and folks going through the red light at Willoughby. They just like use the crosswalk, like the all, all uh, direction crosswalk as like a stop sign instead of a, a red light. Um, I think that this is a, um, a great proposal. Um, it would be a really um, uh, important safety uh, improvement to my neighborhood and uh, for this whole connection between uh, the bike paths on uh, 4th Ave up into Manhattan, as uh, as Brian was mentioning. Um, I am happy to see that hopefully the proposal for the southern end on Ashland Place meets the needs of, of BAM and the businesses there. I do have concerns um, about the parking and the bike Andy, lane. Andy, but please finish up. Um, so I'm supportive. I hope this moves forward. Thanks, DOT and CB2. Thank you. Lucy Coteen. Uh, hi. Okay, a lot, uh, several things. First, on Ashland between Park and Myrtle, there's a very wide striped area. I would recommend taking some of that striped area and, and making it for the left turn cars. And secondly, there should be a left turn arrow at Myrtle because maybe half the cars coming down Ashland there are making that left-hand turn. Thirdly, I see a lot of cars make going northbound cars making a left turn onto Myrtle. I disagree heartily that in very few cars make that turn. And, and I agree that sending them down to Willoughby will disrupt what is currently a quiet residential street. 
Uh, next, St. Felix Street. Esther raised very, raised very important points. It is a narrow street, uh, residents on one side, and there's a school at the corner that uses that playground right there as well. And across the street is a, is a music school, which has many families and children coming and going in the afternoon and on weekends. Thirdly, as she said, they're about to build a 23-story building there, which will have huge construction trucks, double parking, or coming in and out of there with big loads. And once that building is completed, then those residents, and there'll be many new residents to this narrow street who will have deliveries, taxis, and cars pulling up. So doing that to St. Felix is really going to disrupt the street and hurt the residents here. When you said you talked to the stakeholders, did you knock on the doors and talk to the people who actually live there and to the music school. Um, so I think that's it, but it seems very ill-conceived to make St. Felix into the substitute street. And keep in mind, as Esther said, there were two collapses to that street. It cannot take heavy vehicles. Um, one more thing, you don't need to, uh, the sidewalk on Ashland go, is very wide between Hanson and Lafayette. It's a wide pedestrian sidewalk. It works great. And the sidewalk thank, on thank Hanson. Thank you, Ms. Lucy. Uh, 11201, Jason, go. Hi, thank you, everyone. I don't have any prepared remarks, but I live on Myrtle Avenue um, in, in the neighborhood. I bike frequently between Myrtle Avenue and the city bike dock that DOT mentioned is very popular Atlantic Terminal. The current conditions cannot remain. It is not viable. It is not safe for any users of the road, pedestrians, bicyclists, truck drivers, drivers, anyone. Uh, that stretch between DeKalb and Atlantic Terminal it is specifically just outrageously dangerous for everyone on the road. You have uh, people who don't, uh, drivers that don't respect the loading zone rules, that you have double parkers and sometimes triple parkers and the entire segment just becomes gridlock and a symphony of people honking because nothing is moving. Um, we can nitpick this plan to death. Uh, the uh, Brooklyn Academy of Music can nitpick this to death, but they have to be a good neighbor. We can't just all pave to the demands of one entity or two entities. We have to work together. We can't just throw out this entire plan for the entire community and the entire borough, as people have mentioned, since this needs to be a through project for people to get from other parts of Brooklyn to Manhattan and to the waterfront, we need to work together. We can't just say, oh, it's not gonna work because BAM needs to load heavy things once every two months in the middle of the night. We'll work around that, just like it gets worked cool. around in Manhattan and in the broad in the theater district in lower Manhattan. These are issues that are all solvable. We should not see these as problems that make it- seconds. We should not make these uh, insurmountable hurdles that we cannot get over. We need to work together. We need to push this through already. This plan was announced by the de Blasio administration years ago at this point during COVID. We just need to get something done and stop bickering about it and just do it already. Thank you. Thank you. Time's up. Dan? Hey, uh, I live at the corner of Myrtle and Ashlands. I bike that corner uh, regularly. Uh, I'm very much in favor of this plan. I hope to raise a child here and have them feel safe biking and learning to bike on this road. Uh, so hats off to DOT. I love the plan. Hope it gets implemented soon. It's been a long time, as the previous commenter said, and uh, I'll cut my remarks there. Thanks, everyone. One one two one seven, Brandon, please. Moving on to Kevin McGee. Hi, right, thank you. Um, I'm a 10-year resident of Clinton Hill. Um, I just want to voice my enthusiastic support for this, this plan. I don't personally bike, but I do walk by uh, Ashland every day. I walk up uh, between uh, Myrtle and DeKalb, and, and every day the painted lane there is a dump truck parking lane. Every single day there's a row of dump trucks there forcing cyclists into traffic. It's a very dangerous condition, and I'd like to see them afforded the protection that they deserve, especially given the, the need to connect, uh, as others have said, South Brooklyn to the rest of the, the bike network. Um, I do have a very slight concern just about some of the rerouting plans, specifically Rockwell Place, um, not because of 
of the the plan itself but the way that the developer of the the height the high rise that's going up there has been abusing their ability to close off that street for the last year for the construction i just want to make sure that they're brought to heel before this is implemented if that's going to be um uh, if that's supposed to be used for through traffic because it isn't currently being used for through traffic um apart from that i am a little bit crest very briefly just a bit crestfallen at bam's opposition to this but i i do oh no i don't appreciate I don't know. I DOTs. On the ernie mute please um, i do appreciate dot's um uh, efforts to bend over backwards to accommodate them thank you okay thank you the hey, next this is brandon i found the unmute video can i speak in? go ahead two minutes thank you um so I'm thrilled to see this plan. I, I think it's it's so important, as DOT said, how it really ties together the borough network. Uh, but I think if anything, they uh, undersold how important it is into the entire city. It goes not only from 64th Street and Sunset Park, but sort of as Brian was saying, to the Manhattan Bridge up 1st and 2nd Avenue, and it's completely protected all the way to 147th Street and Willis Avenue in the Bronx. That's 15 miles, and this is the only gap in it. And I think that is the longest protected stretch in the entire city. Um, I wish we could finally put the uh, stake in the heart of uh, the idea that putting in protected bike lanes somehow hurts anyone else. As we know from DOT's presentation, protected bike lanes decrease injuries to motor vehicle occupants by 15%, by pedestrians to 21%. And it wasn't in here, and I wish it was, but to senior citizens, protected bike lanes decrease serious injuries and death by 39%. I don't think there is a single other intervention in DOT's uh, toolbox that does that much. Uh, so I think this is great. Uh, going into some minutia, I don't know if we could bring up uh, the part between Myrtle and Park. It was slide 13 in my 40 seconds, but uh, that's by NYCHA and we're seeing uh, a five foot bike lane in each way and then two 12 foot travel lanes and a 10 foot flush median. It seems like all that space just with paint is gonna lead to speeding on that block. I understand there's turn lanes at the end, but I feel at the uh, in the middle of the block, uh, there could be given a little more space to uh, bikes and pedestrians uh, to, and get cars to ease up on the gas. But uh, I think it's a great present uh, plan. Uh, 10 more seconds. Thoughtful. I love the new ContraFlow edition on Hanson Place. Uh, and my only last question would be, when can it be installed? Thank you. Fabio, Cardona. Uh, hi, I'm the property manager for 300 Ashland Place, the location for Whole Foods, Apple, and the coming cultural space, which will include uh, BAM Cinemas, uh, Mokata 2, 651 uh, uh, Fine Arts, and uh, Brooklyn Public Library. Uh, these spaces have yet to open. They are coming open rather soon, I do believe, at the, uh, sometime this year. Um, that said, these spaces are, are relatively new. Uh, the building itself is only six, maybe seven years old. Um, and while I myself am a biker, and Two Trees is definitely adamant about uh, the expansion of the bike system within New York City, um, we think this proposal may be a little short-sighted in the uh, in the effect it'll have on Ashland and the activities that take place there. Um, uh, certainly, it's, uh, we feel a little dubious about the claim for more NYPD enforcement, um, uh, and there are some alternatives that we thought would make a lot more sense. Um, for for example, uh, the ending the street parking to accommodate for the bikes, um, moving the bike lane to Flatbush, where we have a absolutely giant sidewalk that could accommodate an additional bike lane. Um, uh, I even had a thought of what if it went all the way up Hanson uh, towards Carlton, which is already in Northbound Street uh, for the bike lanes themselves. Um, yeah, uh, effectively, we're mostly concerned about the effect it'll have on on um, on the activities that we've partaken already. One one two zero one Nate. Nate, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Hello. Yeah. Um, hello. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity to speak tonight. I live at the Kingsview Co-op on Ashland Place at Myrtle with my wife and two kids. And um, yeah, very enthusiastic about this plan overall. Uh, we had been telling some of our of our co-residents at Kingsview about this, and there's um, you know quite a few families who are we're, we're super excited to hear about this plan. I'm not sure everybody's able to come tonight, but many people were very excited about the plan. Um, 
I think, you know, uh, I have a couple of specific questions and comments. One is just what's the timeline for implementation? Um, uh, I'm hoping that it can be very soon this year so that we can um, start using this as soon as possible. Um, you know, with a lot of these protected bike lanes in New York City, there is problems with intrusion of motor vehicles into the bike lane and therefore permanent vertical separation between the bike lane and parking and um, and also at entrances is important, especially when there's loading zones where there's not parking. Like for example, on the Skirmerhorn one, one often sees trucks entering in where there's a fire hydrant or a loading zone. So vertical separation there is crucial in order to prevent that. Um, I'm enthusiastic about the left turn ban at Myrtle Ave because that's often very hazardous when you're crossing the street. Um, one specific comment is there's an all way walk signal um, in the phase at Ashland Place and Willoughby. And, um, and uh, especially Willoughby, which is St. Edward Street on the other side of the street. Um, it would be nice if that signal can be adjusted as part of this pro project so that pedestrians can go at all times when there's not a conflict. Currently, there, there's a big part of the phase where there's no conflict because the one way is crossing Ashland Place, go outwards. So Ten seconds. there's no conflict. Yep. Um, and then finally, um, at BAM, um, um, you know, yeah, my concern would just be that that the that there's a high likelihood that trucks will just park in the bike lane without Nate, getting a permit. Finish, finish up, Nate. Okay. Yep. So um, it looks like there's space. I wonder if they would just remove all parking. You could have a permanent option where there would be space for bikes to go around. You. Next person. Jeff. Hey, everyone. Uh, so I've lived in Fort Greene since 2015, and I rely on a bike as my way and way to get around the neighborhood in New York City. I travel on Ashland Place multiple times a day. Um, and despite having bike lanes there, it's often blocked by cars and riding on the streets really dangerous. Uh, so a two-way protected bike lane would vastly improve my quality of life and increase safety for everyone. So I fully support this proposal and ask you to upgrade the bike lane as soon as possible and protect it using bollards. Please protect us from cars with bollards. Uh, I also use the new Shimmerhorn bike lane daily. And while it's fantastic, Cars regularly encroach upon us, so I feel confident that cars will not stay out without physical barriers that are not plastic. Uh, I support the special loading plan for BAM as long as the detour is marked out with physical protection and clear signage used to indicate that it's a detour route. And finally, as Earth Day is approaching, I want to highlight that we're experiencing a climate crisis, and we do, we need to ensure that our young people have a chance for a yes, future on off planet. Top, that's off topic. Move on. Camille, we're going on to Camille. Camille. Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, so um, I, I agree that we should have protected bike lanes for everyone, um, for the cyclists. I do have a concern about converting Ashland to a one-way. Um, I live near Ashland and Myrtle and Abai. There's a parking garage right, at, right next to the Whole Foods that I like to access. But with this proposal, I would not be able to go, like if I'm coming from Myrtle um, and Ashland, I will not be able to access that parking garage easily. I'd have to go if I, you know, looked at the the, the map that the the that Nick uh, presented, and if I wanted to even try to take, try to take Rockland, that's convoluted because it's a very narrow street. Um, there's parkings on both sides, and it's and it's real difficult to go that way, especially in the summertime, because traffic in the winter is very different from traffic in the summer. More people are out, more people are driving, and more people are cycling. Um, so to to take Rockland and then go around to Lafayette, that's convoluted. So if I, and other way what I have to do is to go past Washington, like past the park, go to Washington place and then go, it's, it'll be a longer route to get to the parking garage. And I'm also wondering like, how is this gonna impact the business? Because now people who want to park at that, garage, at that parking garage will have a harder time getting there because there's no straight, it's not like a straight shot. They'd have to go all the way around and find the way around to Kansas. And what, what most likely would happen is other people will probably park at other, parking garage is closer. And now I feel like that's going to impact the parking garage's business. So I'm wondering if the Department of Transportation, did they uh, speak to them and find out like how it would impact their business? And I'm quite sure people who are parking at BAM will also park at that parking garage. So if they are not able to access it easily because we want to access things easily, we're going to go someplace else. So I'm wondering how this proposal is going to either impact the parking garage as well as the people who drive. So I, I, I don't agree with this proposal. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Camille. MS is next. 
Hi, apologies. Uh, my name is Max Schnaufer. I live on Ashland between uh, DeKalb and um, Fulton. Uh, I support this proposal and I was hoping to use the remainder of my time for a response from DOT as to what their tentative construction schedule is. Uh, the, it, we're not, they, we're not going to get into that now, and I, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll move on to uh, uh, Ivano Pepa. Uh, uh, Ivano Popov. Okay, please go ahead. Great. Uh, so, thank you very much. I think I'm the first person to speak who lives on the southernmost block of Ashland Place. I live in 300 Ashland, the building that Fabio also works at. He is my landlord. This building has 400 units of which 100 are affordable. I would estimate that there's about a thousand people who rest their heads in this building, who come out onto this street every single morning. I go out here four times a day to walk my dog. This block is hell. It is hell right now. It is a hell of double and triple parking, of screaming cars, of speeding cars, of violence, noise, dirt. As for who parks on the street, there's a huge amount of um, truck loading only, no standing anytime uh, zones. They're occupied 100% of the time by cars with black windows, with fake NYPD vests in the dashboards that belong to um, Apple Store private security. I talked to the par parking enforcement agents and I am told that they cannot write them tickets because those security guards come out and intimidate them when they see them writing the ticket. I just want to describe like what a miserable place this is to live and what a nice and promising plan this is and how absolutely elated I am that you're doing this because it's going to change my life. It's going to change the life of a thousand people who live in my building. It's going to change the life of another thousand of people who live in one Hanson place, also a large residential building on this block. Please think about us. Don't worry about the parking garage's business. Worry about the thousands of humans living, facing this daily, and how much nicer, how much nicer this is going to be. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Christian Piling. Hi, my name is Christian Piling. I'm a seven-year resident of 250 Ashland Place, 590-unit building that's 50% affordable with a significant number of apartments that were set aside for seniors and people with disabilities. We have no parking garage. We have no reliable parking spaces. We are a builder, building of walkers, bikers, and transit riders. We are under assault by aggressive drivers who seem to be getting worse and worse. It is normal to have to sprint out of the way of turning and speeding, speeding vehicles. This is an emergency that needs to be addressed now. Some CB2 board members seem to be confused about why we don't wanna get hit by cars and killed. BAM seems to be confused about why we don't wanna be hit by cars and killed. Prioritize the most vulnerable road users, not the 18 wheelers, not Uber and Lyft. Ernie, Sandy, Juliet, please come and see our bicycle garage. It contains hundreds of bikes, dozens of children's bikes, dozens of strollers that get walked down Ashland Place. Did climate change is never off topic, ever. Thank you. Who's that? Hello, um, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, um, my name is Suzette. I live at 250 Ashland. I am one of the um, re residents that live in this unit. I am, Saying, um, I do agree with the proposal. I think the proposals do need to get modified. As a resident of this building, as the gentleman before mentioned, there is no, um, there is no parking garages. I have a car, and as a resident in this building, I find it very difficult for looking for parking. I want to discuss about um, DOT is now saying that they want to implement meters, and that's a concern for me because. There's already no parking in the area, and we try to do our best in the community, and by adding meters is not helpful. Um, I do believe that adding a bike, a mini, because uh, this is about solution, adding a mini, a mini street between Flappish and Ashland so the bike can get on to Ashland could be a solution because I walk 
in between that block. And what I noticed is bicycle will come onto the sidewalk and hit people on the sidewalk that are waiting to cross the street or just walking in between going to Atlantic so Terminal. So that 15 or going, seconds? Going between Atlantic Terminal or going to the Apple Store. And there should be something to indicate to people that we're allowing bikes to travel in between time. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Suzette. Madeline Gray. Hi, um, I live on Ashland between DeKalb and Fulton, um, and I would just echo what others have said. It is an extremely dangerous street. I've seen head-on collisions, people are speeding. Um, so I really endorse this plan fully. Um, I do also, given um, the major changes that are happening to our neighborhood, with my, which I know all my neighbors can attest to, there's a 52-story building going up at 180 Ashland. Um, two-way traffic on Ashland with that kind of density is just going to be hugely dangerous. So I'm actually not a biker. Um, so that's just, um, uh, I think it's just a great idea to slow down traffic um, and reduce flow um, here. I do want to point out again, which was already mentioned, the, the Department of Buildings is has closed Rockwell Place and Hudson Avenue um, repeatedly day after day. Uh, so that has to be addressed by DOT um, if it's going to continue for months and months because it will inhibit the flow of traffic. And we've got to be sure that people can get to Brooklyn Hospital, for example, if they're in an ambulance. Um, so all in all, uh, endorse the plan fully uh, and do hope that further steps can be taken um, by the DOT to work with the Department of Buildings to mitigate the impacts of um, this mega construction happening in our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Nina? Hello, um, my name is Nina Mukherjee. I live at 125 Ashland, which is uh, Kingsview Homes. Um, it's like a big apartment complex between Willoughby and Myrtle. Um, I'm really in support of this plan. I have two kids under three and I'm really excited for when, they're, when they start biking right now. Um, my husband and I bike around the neighborhood, bike um, for fun, but also to get to my parents' house in Gorham Hill. Um, and we'd like to do those trips with our kids when they're, you know, six, seven, eight, and it's really hard to imagine doing that without protected bike lanes. So um, so I'm really supportive of this. And also I'll say there's a big movement afoot within our co-op to expand bike parking. There's a lot of interest in cycling. We have 300 units in the, um, in the co-op and a lot of people are really um, excited about cycling and excited about this proposal. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Just, I just want to alert everyone that the last person's name is Michelle's phone. So I'm, there's no where the uh, public comment mm -hmm. uh, is, is now closed for future. Oh. So don't put your hands back up. I'm going to call everybody's hands are up. All right. I have about yes. 10 more people to go. I'm just saying I'm not a, I'm not going to recognize anybody after those dates. The next person is uh, is, uh, Raquel, is Rachel Cole. Hi there, um, I'm a 21 year resident of Fort Greene and of Community Board 2. And I'm a mom of an 11 year old. I live on 135 Ashland Place, right where this is ha should, ha should happen. I'm fully very, very, very supportive of this. Um, it's really, really, really dangerous street. It terrifies me. It terrifies me to, to cross the street at Willoughby and Ashland. Cars come just, racing through there at top speed um yet i only see them ticketing bikers which makes no sense um my kid gets on the bus on ashland place and the bus is forced to pull up in a way that's dangerous for both my child and bicyclists and other pedestrians um i think that the concerns about you know like traffic are short-sighted because traffic being rerouted are short-sighted, although I know they're important, but they're short-sighted because the more bike lanes we have, the more people will bike, the less people will need to use cars. I will get rid of my car, which I would love to do, and I can't right now. I'm afraid to bike. I'm terrified to bike. I would love to be able to do it. I would love for my son to be able to do it. Um, and one thing I just want to mention is with two trees being like um, Fabio with, I understand your concerns about, you know, needing to load things and everything, but your company could be very um, on, you know, very uh, like ahead of the curve by using smaller trucks 
um, to get things to your building. They could, um, they could, th I mean, understand that the more pedestrian friendly. Rachel, the please finish up. Sorry, the more the more pedestrian friendly that the built the whole neighborhood is, the more foot traffic you will get, and it will be a destination. Thank you. Thank you, Sam Anderson. Hi there, I'm I'm Sam. I live in Clinton Hill. Uh, first, I want to thank Nick Carey, thank you, and all of your colleagues at DOT. Just really appreciate the the depth of of your presentation and showing all the different design elements is very helpful to have those visual aids and seeing the maps. I want to express my strong support, strong overwhelming support for the protected bike lane uh, through Ashland and Navy. Uh, I, I really feel this way because of the facts that show that a connected network of protected bike lanes will really benefit everyone uh, that's pedestrians, cyclists, as well as drivers, uh, because it will reduce the number of crashes that happen for all of those modes, for anyone that's taking any of those modes. And we've seen that research. It's really uh, positive to see uh, that, you know, improving uh, with just a bike lane can have such amazing effects on the rest of the system. So this is really critical as we see traffic violence rise and uh, protected bike lanes at like the one that was proposed here tonight with Ashland Navy is, is a great way uh, which is one of many ways that we can use to prevent injury and save lives. Thank you. Thank you, Chris G. All right, well, thank you for hearing us out today. I'm, I'm a, I've had some of my neighbors on the phone here. We're in one of these buildings on Ashland that's got you know 49 floors with like 10 units on each floor, well over a thousand people live in our building alone and some of us have cars and there's just no getting around it you know there's for, for family reasons for you know elderly reasons whatever some of us just simply have cars whether we like it or not i've been here about seven years really familiar with the area the stretch between hansen and fulton which has gotten a lot of airtime today is very busy there's no doubt about it uh, because of all the commercial activity and these you know very big high rises Vehicles are going to be coming up that way, whether you turn it into a one way or not, there's no getting around it. Um, Whole Foods and BAM have been covered pretty thoroughly this evening. I feel like one thing that's not gotten enough mention is the medical center across the street from BAM at the uh, southeast corner of Lafayette and uh, Ashland. Um, that's a very busy medical center and the, you know, I, I see it every day, the people who go there, they come in cars and that's sort of by necessity. They're, elderly and, and infirm and, and all that sort of thing. They come in cars and they're going to keep coming in cars and they're going to block traffic. And that, I think this is going to turn that, you know, turning this thing into a one way is going to just turn it in to, to just even more traffic than was ever even intended. I think if you were able to start it above Fulton, just above Fulton, you know, I think you'd have clear sailing up to the bridges with the bike lanes and meet all the goals and intentions of this project. Uh, thanks for your time. Thank you. Julio Basilica. Hi, um, my, my name is Julio. I'm a nearly lifelong resident of Fort Greene in Clinton Hill. Um, I'm on this corridor almost every day, multiple times a day, either by walking, biking, driving, or in a school bus. Um, and I absolutely support these changes. I think that they would complete, as others have said, complete this 15 mile long protected bike lane through the city. Um, they would lead to fewer pedestrian fatalities and just a safer environment and a more pleasant environment for everyone. Um, and it would better organize car traffic around the area, which I'm definitely in favor of because I do drive through our neighborhood sometimes. Um, and it is a mess, especially in those areas. And thank you. Darren Golder. Hi, uh, my name is Darren Goldner. I live on Vanderbilt and Willoughby. Uh, I am wholeheartedly in favor of implementing these improvements as soon as possible. And thank you for coming uh, to our community board. Uh, I've been going to uh, shows at BAM since the 1980s. And uh, my memories are a mix of enjoying great shows, but also being terrified of the traffic and the danger in highways. Getting, getting to BAM, uh, uh, mo most of the time being a pedestrian, taking mass transit, 
and then and then having to navigate into BAM from there. Uh, I bike along uh, Ashland all the time now. You have everything from the Sharrows up by BAM, which are more dangerous than not having bike lanes right now, to the highway section down by a Navy uh, and uh, and and, um, and and getting to the Manhattan Bridge, which which is like terrifying because cars speed through there and the roads are in such great disrepair. And then as a pedestrian, there's literally no sidewalk. Uh, I can't wait for this to happen. Uh, people have been talking about the growth of uh, our neighborhood in terms of residents. Uh, we can't support any more cars in the neighborhood. It's already like wildly dangerous and packed and crazy with traffic. We we have to have more mass transit, more pedestrian friendly friendly options, more active transport friendly options. Uh, it's it's like a geometry and physics problem. It's not just like you know saving the earth. It's literally we can't do it. We can't like we're gonna keep hurting people and diminishing our quality. Of Fifteen life. seconds. Uh, so thank you, DOT. I hope you can implement this as soon as possible. It's been years already. Like we're ready. Diana Martins, Diane Martins, excuse me. Diane? Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I wanted to thank the DOT for this plan. I fully support it. Um, I've been a Burham Hill resident for a while. And um, I when I bike back from North Brooklyn, I'm typically just walking my bike once I get to Flushing and Navy because that stretch is so dangerous. Um, I wanted to also note that there are two schools at the corner of Ashland or Navy and Flushing. And um, I worked with Andrew on some of the outreach to neighbors there. And most of the kids that we spoke to were really excited about the prospect of having a safer route to both walk to school and bike to school. And so I don't know to what extent uh, the DOT did outreach to schools around uh, the area, but um, the schools at that intersection were really excited about this project. Um, thanks again uh, to the DOT for this plan. Thank you, Diane. Kathy Park Price. Hi, Kathy. Hello. Um, I also want to thank the DOT for their thoughtful proposal, and I'm excited to join the chorus of parents here tonight who have um, express their strong support of this protected bike lane. Um, I too am a parent. I have two small children who I um, bike to school, bike to work, bike to their school with, and also use this um, section, um, Ashland Navy, from where I live in Park Slope, to access um, some of the great um, you know, uh, parts of Brooklyn, like Domino Park. And so my family really relies on this connection and that this is that critical gap in a protected bike network. Um, as, so I'm speaking as a mother and also as someone who commutes to my office in lower Manhattan. So um, like others have said, this is a critical gap. It's actually long overdue. And it's actually a shame that we have to fight so hard for basic infrastructure to keep lives safe. And for the rest of my minute, I'd like to read from um, Ariel Keenan's testimony. She couldn't be here. She lives on Ashland Place and frequently uses the street for walking and biking. On nearly a daily basis, I encounter dangerous drivers who do not yield to pedestrians and cyclists and often speed, even though there are speed bumps. I look forward to the implementation of the redesign that will provide a safer street for all who use it and connect critical transit infrastructure. I hope that BAM will join the community in supporting this much needed improvement. Thank you. And that's from Ariel Keenan, Ashland Place resident. Thank, thank you, Kathy. Uh, and Andon Keller. Hey there, I'm Andon. I live on South Portland and I have two main points that I want to hit on. That's quick builds and bollards. Uh, I appreciate DOT for and everyone for the engagement and the community uh, discussion. And these discussions end up being a lot of hypothetical, anecdotal things and topics uh, that might not come to actually be. Uh, so I'm a big fan of quick builds. I wish DOT would participate in more quick builds so that we can see the impact it has on our community and we can make adjustments from there. Uh, and on the other spectrum of that, so let's you know, move fast, make adjustments, iterate 
quickly, get, gather feedback. On the other side of that is we need ball yards. We, we need ball yards. We need mature ball yards that will protect us from vehicles. Uh, it, it's, it's not okay that I spend so much time so scared of if that vehicle is going to run me over or not. We need ball yards, quick builds, ball yards. That's my feedback for DOT. Okay, thank you, Andon. Liam? Liam? Liam, 11205. Liam going once, going twice. Michelle's phone. Michelle's Hi. iPhone. Hi, my name is Michelle. I live between on Ashland between DeKalb and uh, Fulton and just want to say happy Earth Day. I know we're celebrating the Earth this um, weekend and this is such a timely project and I just want to thank DOT. Um, I sometimes bike into Manhattan to work as a way of commuting. My partner does regularly and I constantly am concerned about um, both of our health and safety as we go along the street that has a lot of air pollution um, and just traffic through uh, the vehicles that go through. So I'm really looking forward to something that can help slow down the traffic and make this more um, safe for the community that lives around here. Um, my only feedback to DOT would be if we could um, add some plants in the plan, um, perhaps we could use plants instead of bollards or um, increase some of the, the tree plantings along the street. Okay, thanks. Thank you, I'm gonna try Liam one more time. Liam? Okay, I'm sorry, the uh, public session is now closed. Back to the regular meeting. Is is the is DOT asking anything specific from uh, D from CB two? Are you asking for approval? Are you asking for comments? DOT. Um, I don't know if Emily's still here, but no this this meeting was intended to be informational. Sorry, Nick, I'm here. Yeah, um, it was getting comments and feedback. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, thank. Thank you for coming. Uh, uh, I, I appreciate the presentation. Hopefully, it'll go go back for you to do a few things. I will ask you to to get the name and uh, from Taya uh, from the NYCHA people, and I would ask you to try to talk to them at least one more time. I understand you'll probably have continuing discussions with BAM. Uh, obviously, we're concerned about the businesses and BAM in in our community. We're concerned about uh, we're we're concerned about traffic violence in general, and that that we we hope that we can uh, as meet as much of the community needs as possible. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Mr. Carey or Emily. Um, is there anything you're able to share at this time regarding the timeline or next steps? Uh, we're hoping to start installation uh, this summer, um, but no guarantees yet. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you, DOT, and thank you, Emily. And I hope this hope you have a presentation for us on Atlantic Avenue next time. We'll start an email thread about it. Um, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Bye. You're welcome. Thanks, Emily. Good night. All right. The the next topic is the chairperson's report. Obviously, I, I, I'm I'm highly concerned about the uh, uh, traffic violence on Atlantic Avenue. Uh, what, one of the things I want to point out that I mean, you know. Each one of those deaths is tragic. I, I the, the 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 woman who was run over, uh, who lived in Brooklyn Heights before uh, uh, Catherine Harris, uh, was someone who I had met at, uh, and and it was tragic that she was she was killed on the sidewalk by a Turner who was speeding, you know. So the the other deaths, some of two of them were people crossing in the middle of the street, which is problematic both for the driver and for the pedestrian, unfortunately. Uh, but obviously, it's the pedestrian who winds up getting who's suffering, and and we want to protect the set pedestrians by slowing the traffic down uh, as much as possible. At the same time, preserving the businesses and everything else on our Atlantic Avenue who who need trucks and people. There aren't very many truck routes in Brooklyn. Atlantic Avenue, unfortunately, is one of those truck routes, and it's one of those things that we're going to have to try to work out uh, as as much as we can with the help of DOT and with our public in general. Uh, any other committee business? Raise your hand if there's any other committee business. Hearing none, this is a community forum, community forums for anyone who wishes to raise any other issue concerning uh, traffic 
pub or public safety as well. It's not just traffic in the neighborhood. Uh, we also deal with the police and fire, and obviously, and then if, if anybody else has anything to say, two minute rule. Anyone have anything? Any? I, I see no hands. No hands uh, being. Sid, this, this is this is John Do. Hey John, John. First of all, let me. Let, first of all, I'm glad. I'm truly glad to hear from you, John. It's been a while, and I and 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 although I I sometimes get concerned about your dulcet tones, I really do miss them. So go ahead for a couple <laughs> well, of minutes. Well, you start getting them again as soon as I get my cataracts removed. Um, Sid, uh, we are really having major concerns with downtown Brooklyn, and I, you know I'm going to keep it to my two minutes. Downtown Brooklyn has not had the kind of analysis that it needs to have in order to make the appropriate decisions that are best for the entire community. I was amazed about the call-ins from that whole BAM cultural district and the lack of input from DOT in terms of understanding all of the dynamics that involved. We have more of everything, buildings, people, all of the things that are part of growth except streets. And the streets that we do have are being apportioned to accommodate uh, electric lithium bike lanes. And then we're actually closing streets off and calling them open streets. We need to have a community analysis so that we can have a vision and understanding of all the dynamics that are going on. Because what's being discussed tonight, everybody has their own idea of what ought to be the case. And guess what? There are no more streets. So that's not going to happen. We need a realistic approach, and we're not getting it. And that's enough for one night. Thank you, Sid. Thank you, John. It's good to hear from you, really. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff? Oh, Sid, you yeah. got, I, I'm doubling your salary tonight, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's up of nothing. <laughs> Go ahead, Jeff. Um, yeah, I had a question. I, I hope it's relevant. I think it is. Um, it's related to NYPD vehicles that drive through Fort Green Park. Um, so this happens like probably at least a couple times a week now. Um, well, they'll drive like their SUV cruisers in Fort Green Park and just park them on the pedestrian pathways. Um, and today, actually, I, I politely asked one of them to at least turn off their engine because they were idling their engine and, you know, yeah. there's exhaust in the park. You know, people want to be away from cars and exhaust when they enter the park. So I'm wondering if there's an avenue for the community board to help out with this. You, you know, I'll be honest with you. Uh, for, for, do you know what precinct? Was it the 8-4 precinct or just another precinct? Not sure. No, next time to try to identify the precinct. I'll be honest with you. Getting uh, a parking, you know, the the head of patrol when 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 they were raised recently, someone raised with the head of patrol the police parking all over the place, uh, which which the community board has had a problem with forever, and his response was, "Well, we don't have free parking for them, so they park any place they want." I mean, to a large extent that there's a real, a, a personal, I, I think there's a disconnect between the police and what they should be doing and, and what they are doing. And, and the community board has had that issue a while. Uh, uh, while we're, hope, we, we're, we're happy to hear the complaint. And uh, uh, I, I really, there's very little the community board could do about it, to be honest with you. Okay. Juliet. Hi, I just wanted to note in for community forum because I found out today from the Brooklyn Navy Yard uh, management folks that the MTA is going to stop routing the B-67 through the Navy Yard. And I think that is really problematic. It connects downtown Brooklyn to uh, North, North uh, Brooklyn in a very expeditious manner. And the B-62 takes forever and is very circuitous. So if anybody like me has disagreements with that. I just wanted to make sure that that was known widely in the community. Hey, would you would you make sure that's announced in the uh, weekly report? Yeah, um, Julia, what's the notify of it? Did, did we know about it? 
I, I need to do some more research into this, Juliet, to make sure that that's not part of the the borough wide bus changes that were announced. Can you, if you were, did you read something or did you see something? No, the Brooklyn Navy Yard management personnel just told me today that the MTA is uh, uh, proposed is going to do this. They're ah. going to shut down bus stops in the Navy Yard. Can you see if you can forward me something? I will promise to follow up on that. Suzanne. Um, okay, I, it wasn't uh, it wasn't announced. Uh, I but see. Nobody okay. told me. Nobody told me it was confidential, so I'm letting people know. <laughs> Um, I, for what it's worth, we haven't been notified at the office. Maybe we let's see if we can find out. Suzette? MTA will be, will be back uh, either next month or in June. Hello. Go ahead, Suzette. Uh, hi, how are you doing? Um, I have concerns of people leaving abandoned vehicles on the, on the street. Um, as I mentioned before, I do drive, I do drive, a, I own a car and I drive a car. And I have noticed this one vehicle has been abandoned on Ashland between Lafayette I'm, I'm gonna stop and you, Suzette, Fulton. Suzette, 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 if you call 311. I have. You, complaint, you have a complaint number? Yes. And follow, up with, with, fo and follow up with Taya. The sanitation okay. has a specific way I mean, of getting... I'm sorry, I made two complaints, one with impact NYPD uh, that's a, just get the and Swimit. Okay. Get, get the information to her. We you're Telling us this, with, we're, we're, we're not here, we don't tell them, all right? Well, you, I'm this is my first community you, board. This is my first community you board meeting. Me. I'll be happy to help you. Yeah, this is my first community board meeting, no, that's okay. and I wanted to just address. Uh, no, no, that's why so we're happy. Here. I'm giving we're you a way to, to follow up on it so it gets taken care of, that's all. Okay. Um, so you. I just follow with Taya. Okay, yes. no problem. Thank you. Thank you, Suzette. Go ahead, Brian. Thank you. Um, this item also came up at uh, last night's land use committee meeting. Um, the Atlantic Avenue mixed use plan. Um, uh, they're still doing uh, community meetings to gather input as to what uh, Atlantic Avenue should look like. I believe it's between Vanderbilt and Nostrand. Um, so uh, certainly borders part of our, our district um, on the north side of Atlantic between Vanderbilt and Classen. The next meeting um, uh, to discuss this project is next week, Thursday, April 27th at 6.30 p.m. And I believe uh, the address is um, 80 Underhill Avenue. Uh, just wanted to mention that here. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. R Rachel? Hi. Um, I just I just wanted to mention the um, this uh, there was a comment about villainizing car drivers. And I actually want to just um, want just want to say that, you know, I am I am a car driver and I also am terrified of car traffic. Um, so it's not an either or thing. It's not a binary black and white thing. It's a very, very nuance thing and the fewer people that are driving on our streets the easier it is for people who actually need to drive to drive there will be less traffic so that's just something to think about but also i do i do want to say that i also i don't understand why idling is not being enforced um ever anywhere for any reason and it upsets me greatly. Like I can smell it in my apartment. It is horrible for you. It causes asthma and cancer and it makes your apartment dirty and it smells. And my child just chokes it down. And when you ask people to stop idling and let them know about the two minute rule, which is a law, when you let cops know this, they don't know it's a law. I, I would really, really like to see some action on idling. It's a very easy way for us to reduce emissions and pollution. Okay, so- well, like a, of, It's like an e a low hanging fruit. Okay, we need so, like an well, ad campaign or something. Well, there there is what, there's what, if, if, it's, if, if it's a commercial vehicle, all right, mm -hmm. you in fact can take a picture, okay. a, a video on your camera, Okay. Record it on 311, all right? And if it's a commercial vehicle, they in fact will pay you part of the fine that they collect. Okay. If okay. it's a if it's not a commercial vehicle, 
they you can still report it all right but they I, i'm not exactly i i think they may in fact go and ticket them but for whatever reason they don't have the uh bonus the the whatever it's called so okay. so there is a way of doing it as far as the police go uh, you heard my comment before it, 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 it this is a if find out the precinct number report it to the precinct okay uh go to precinct council meetings uh, i have done all of that they don't care which, they which just precinct laugh is, in your face well 88th precinct? precinct for for one which one the 88th precinct okay Okay, thank you. We'll we'll be happy to see what you know. We'll, we'll be happy to help. Brian, you have Wonderful. something else. Thank you. I just wanted to add some detail here. Um, and Taya beat me to adding the link. Um, uh, for the idling program, um, I just want to recommend that you follow the instructions very carefully. You have to use a special app. Uh, it right. does take a while to go through the process. Um, but yes, uh, you can actually take action yourself. So highly recommend that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, hearing nothing further, can I have a motion to adjourn? Um, that is, can I, I, and I, I don't want to keep this meeting longer, but I, if it's possible and it's not, it's okay. I just kind of wanted to address um, Rachel's comment because she did uh, respond to my my chat and someone else said something. If it's not okay, then I'll, I will let you guys adjourn. But if it is, I would like to you know address it, please, if that's okay. What, what's the issue? Well, I mean, I, uh, Rachel, uh, you know, responded to my comment about just the, the climate here. You know, I felt like, you know, I, I enjoyed everyone's, I, you know, took in consideration everyone's comments, but I felt like drivers are really villainized here. And I, and I just said a kind comment in the email, just saying, I just hope that we don't create this atmosphere where it's cyclists against pedestrians, I mean, against drivers, because every driver is not reckless. And a lot of us share your sentiments. But I just want to be careful that, you know, we're not creating this atmosphere of it's us versus you or something, because it's not that way. And I think if we go into thinking, if we go, if we approach it that way, then it will be this way and it will be hostile. And I know someone says something about, you know, it is personal and, and you know, I, should, it, I, I they take it personal when somebody's trying to kill them. And that's really an unfair statement because every driver is not out there to kill you. You know, there are some reckless drivers, but there's also some reckless cyclists. And I think we need to be fair and a little perspective. And I, and I'm, I know the majority of the people here are cyclists and they're not maybe a lot of drivers on this in this meeting, but I feel like they, they probably were, especially responsible drivers, they would have a lot to say. We share a lot of your sentiments, but please, let's, I just ask this, please, I hear you. Most of us hear you. Most of us agree, but please let us not create this atmosphere as us against you. It's not that. It's about making it safe for everyone, even the other drivers. It's not just the cyclists, it's the other drivers as well who wants to be safe. So that was just my comment. Please don't misconstrue my comment, please. All right. First of all, I, I thank you. It's a comment I make occasionally too. We, we, we all share the highway, whether you're a driver, a pedestrian, a truck driver. I mean, all the people are trying to do their, do, try to do their jobs and trying to get there safely. Uh, uh, as you heard at the beginning, I just came back from Cairo and I crossed the street in Cairo and crossing the street in New York is nothing like crossing the street in Cairo. So uh, 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 I appreciate the comment. We, we, we try to listen to everybody and try to get everyone's point of view. We hopefully try to work together as people who, who live in a community and, 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 and we live and learn from each other and, and seize it from other, other people's view. And, and thank you. And again, uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? Uh, motion to adjourn. Okay. Thank you, Esther. And second, and second, any objection? If not, thank you. Thank you. Good night. And everyone, good night. <laughs> good night. Good night.